trial by lightning and the makings of a friendship. Dark and dreary clouds blotted out the sun as Ash made his way to M.T. Moon. Said trainer frowned as he looked up at the cloud-covered sky. The clouds had come in quickly and without notice, and had obscured the clear blue sky before he even knew it. It looked like it was about to rain, luckily they had made quick time to M.T. Moon. The imposing mountain loomed overhead, dwarfing even the tallest of trees. Its shadow was huge and stretched to cover nearly a mile of land, casting the gully he was passing through in darkness. As always, Pikachu was on his shoulder and Lucario was right beside him. The trio was making quick time to their destination. They wanted to be inside MT. Moon before it started to rain. To their luck, there were only a few trainers who challenged them on the way. Ash easily took care of them, holding his as of yet unbroken streak of victories. Ash's eyes returned to MT. Moon and he took in the awe-inspiring sight. While not the largest mountain in Kanto, it was one of the most visited and brilliant landmarks of the continent. In addition, it was this mountain that split Kanto in two. As such, MT. Moon was often referred to as, the wall. Down at the very base of the mountain was a small Pokemon center, right next to the dark cave leading into the mountain. Ash examined it for a moment before taking out his flashlight from his backpack. He was going to need it if he wanted to traverse the dark passages ahead. Lucario looked over at him and nodded at the Pokemon Center. Ash shook his head, no, and continued on tracking towards the cave. There was no need to rest up at the Pokemon Center. They hadn't been traveling all that long and his Pokemon had hardly been weakened from the few battles on their way to the mountain. Ash frowned as they got closer to the cave. A commotion was going on just in front of it. He could hear people arguing heatedly, but he couldn't make out what they were saying. After a few moments he could see the people who were arguing, a police officer and a couple of burly men. What's going on in there? One of the burly men exclaimed, frustrated. The Pokemon have become much more aggressive all of a sudden. I don't know sir, the police officer responded in a patient manner. I'm doing everything in my power to try and find out what the cause is of this situation, he replied to the burly man who Ash now recognized as one of those iconic hikers that could always be found in and around any mountainous regions. What's going on? Ash questioned when he came close enough to be heard. All their heads snapped towards him. The police officer's eyes sparked in recognition when he saw Ash, but the hiker responded first. Trouble in the mountain, lad. I'm afraid that it might be better if you took the long way around, the hiker said. He nodded at the mountain cave. The Pokemon in there have suddenly become a lot more aggressive as of a day ago, for seemingly no reason. It might be a bit too dangerous for a young lad like you to go trespassing there right now. More aggressive how? Ash questioned, masking his irritation for the hiker who had questioned his strength. Like you would expect, the officer said, jumping into the conversation. The Pokemon in there attack far more frequently than before, and with much more intent to do harm. Normally they mostly leave trainers alone, but all of a sudden they are on edge and attack for the smallest of reasons. And you don't know what's causing it. Ash frowned. He could feel both Pikachu and Lucario tensing up for some reason. No, the officer responded, scowling. There's nothing that points to any reason for this sudden mood swing in the Pokemon. Can I still go inside? I'm not planning on walking around the whole damn mountain, Ash asked. Walking around Mount Moon might take weeks while traveling through it would only take a day or two. While he fiercely enjoyed traveling he desperately wanted to have his next gym battle as soon as possible. Why not, lad? Hiking up and down mountains builds endurance and not to mention character. The hiker suddenly cut in with a rumbling belly laugh. His friends behind him nodded in agreement. Ash and the officer ignored them. You can, the officer nodded. The worst Pokemon might do to you if your own fail to protect you is shove you down, but they won't do anything seriously harmful. And considering the fact that you managed to take out that group of rockets on your own I don't think any of the Pokemon in there can give you any trouble. As long as you're careful everything should be fine. The hikers blinked, surprised to hear that a 10-year-old managed to take out a group of rockets by himself. There were rumors going around that a kid had taken down some big shot rocket operation but they hadn't believed it, dismissing it as some baseless rumor, until now at least. 
Good. Ash nodded gratefully at the police officer and quickly headed into the dark cave, Lucario close behind him. He switched on his flashlight immediately. It was far darker than he expected it to be. Almost immediately a group of Zubat came sweeping down from above, screeching out a challenge. Pikachu reacted instantly and jumped up from Ash's shoulder. He gathered a huge amount of electricity and zapped all the Zubat with one massive thunderbolt. They screeched in pain and quickly flew off, once again disappearing into the darkness. Pikachu, Lucario. What's going on? Ash questioned lowly as he cast his flashlight around the darkness of the cave, trying to find any more threats. I don't know, Pikachu responded. He was tense and his fur was standing on end. I just feel as if something is pushing down on me. Some kind of presence. It feels heavy and it puts me on edge. Ash blinked. He didn't feel anything out of the ordinary. Pikachu could feel it and Lucario could too. And the Pokemon in the cave certainly felt it as well. It seemed that only Pokemon could feel this strange, presence. I know this feeling, Lucario whispered. Ash and Pikachu looked over to him curiously. I felt something similar when I entered the core of the tree of beginning. This presence is very similar to the feeling of being in the presence of Mew. Lucario looked Ash in the eyes. They had gone wide. A legendary is close by and it has put the wild Pokemon on edge. A legendary, Ash whispered in awe. His mind flashed back to his meeting with the Lati twins in Alto Mare. That had been an incredible experience and it had shown to him how special legendaries truly were. That he was close to another one right now made him oddly giddy. I want to see it, he said. The Aura user looked at Lucario imploringly. Are you sure that's a good idea? Pikachu suddenly cut in. He looked nervous at the suggestion. Just because it's a legendary doesn't mean that it's friendly. For all we know it just wants be left alone. If we disturb a legendary and it got angry at us. The electric mouse shivered. Pikachu, legendaries aren't that easy to anger. Yes, some of them have fickle tempers but a legendary won't attack us because we want a glimpse at it, Lucario said soothingly. He smiled at the electric type. Trust me, it will be safe. After a moment of deliberation Pikachu nodded. If you say so Lucario. Now we just need to know where to look, Ash mused. He closed his eyes and placed his palm in front of his chest. The aura is with me. The very moment he intoned the ancient mantra his aura sight activated and his gaze spread to cover nearly the entirety of MT. Moon. Immediately, his enhanced gaze was drawn to the very top of MT. Moon. There, right at the top of the mountain, was a huge sphere of power. He couldn't make out what it was, only the feel of immense strength filtered through his enhanced awareness. Ash brushed up against the presence with his mind. He immediately recoiled. His eyes snapped open wide in awe and he shivered. The power he had just felt. He trailed of in deep thought. That power, it had shattered any of his preconceived notions of strength. Lucario's great strength was nothing to it in comparison. From the look on your face you clearly weren't expecting the feel of a legendary, Lucario said with a faintly amused expression on his face. It was to be expected. The power of legendaries is far beyond the mind of mortals like us. Ash nodded in agreement. That power was far beyond his awareness. It only made him giddier to see the legendary up close. The sound of stone grinding against stone drew him from his thoughts. His eyes snapped up and he saw a trio of Geodude rapidly approaching them. They growled at them and reared back to attack them, readying themselves to use rock throw. Lucario reacted with seconds to spare. He jumped forwards, crossing the distance between him and the rock types within the blink of an eye, and slammed a glowing palm into the lead Geodude. The power of a force palm erupted from his palm like a cannon in a green burst of energy. The Geodude didn't even cry out in pain. It just fainted instantly and slammed into the cavern wall with the force of a rock wrecker. The other two Geodudes snapped towards Lucario, but before they could react Lucario blasted them both with an aura sphere, knocking them out as well. Lucario smirked in victory. That was easy. His eyes turned serious and he looked at Ash. That said, we will get tired eventually if we keep getting attacked. I suggest we take a stealthy approach and try and avoid any more battles for the time being. Ash considered this for a moment. A smirk appeared on his face as an even better idea came to him. No, he said, surprising Lucario. 
Pikachu cocked his head inquisitively at his trainer, curious as to what he was going to suggest. I have a better idea, Ash said and took out a leaf from his pocket. Lucario's eyes lighted up in comprehension, but Pikachu looked confused. How in Arceus' name is a leaf going to help us against a bunch of aggravated wild Pokemon? He asked slightly incredulously. Ash gave a short laugh at the question, reminding himself that Pikachu didn't already know of Oracion and of its effects. Before he could answer, though, he spotted a group of Paris emerging from the darkness. They clicked their mandibles threateningly at them and moved towards them. Ash smirked as he placed the leaf against his lips and took a deep breath through his nose. A second later the sweet melody of Oracion echoed in the dark cavern. The Paris stopped advancing on them immediately. Their eyes closed in contentment and they released a low keening sound. Pikachu had a similar reaction, he sagged slightly on Ash's shoulder as his eyes fluttered closed. The group of Paris stood stock still, frozen by the beautiful sound. They didn't even react when Ash, who of course had Pikachu on his shoulder, and Lucario walked right past them and down the corridor. They only started moving again when Ash and company had gotten so far away that Oracion could no longer reach them. By that time Ash, Lucario, and Pikachu were long gone. Ash put out the flashlight and placed it back in his backpack. He would adjust to the darkness rather quickly. It was better if he just let his eyes get used to the darkness, the flashlight should be saved for emergencies. As the group continued down the dark cavern the sound of Oracion halted and soothed any Pokemon they encountered. Geodude, Zubat, Clefairy, and Paris all halted and listened to Ash's song, completely enraptured by the beautiful sound. Pikachu was in a similar state, but he was able to fight through the hypnotizing effect of Oracion. His eyes fluttered open and he groaned. W what kind of s song is this? He gasped out as the beautiful melody tried to return him to his state of bliss. Lucario answered for Ash as the young trainer continued on playing his song. This song is called Oracion. Ash learned it about four years ago from one of the friends he made on his journeys with his mother. It calms down anyone who hears. It is a song that is capable of soothing the darkest of emotions. The Aura Pokemon grinned. It's the perfect tool to calm these wild Pokemon down. Pikachu groaned as his eyes fluttered close again. Lucario chuckled and closed his own eyes, relying on his aura sight to lead him through the dark cavern. He listened intently to Oracion. The group kept on walking down the cavern for an unobservable amount of time. It could have been an hour, maybe even ten hours. The song made them lose their connection with time. Any Pokemon that crossed their path stopped whatever they were doing and listened intently to the song, and could care far less for attacking them. Finally, after a very long time, Ash halted his song. He removed the leaf from his mouth and placed it back in his pocket. Pikachu's eyes snapped open wide as he regained complete control of his body. That was incredible, the electric mouse breathed out in awe. Why'd you stop? I'm starting to get hungry, Ash answered. He blushed as his stomach rumbled in agreement. It's time we eat something. Pikachu's and Lucario's stomachs suddenly rumbled in agreement as well. They quickly agreed to the suggestion of a quick meal. Ash ate a pair of his sandwiches he had made for himself the day before. They had nothing on the ones his mother had made for him but he would have to make do. Pikachu had his share of Pokoko and Lucario ate a few berries he had plucked the day before for himself, as a snack for when they entered the caverns of M.T. Moon. Now that Ash wasn't playing Oracion any Pokemon would probably attack them on sight. As they ate they were constantly on the lookout, anxious to see if any Pokemon would once again try to attack them while they ate. A fact they became grateful for when they suddenly heard a deep growl and the sound of stone grinding against stone. A graveler emerged from way down the cavern and its beady black eyes locked onto them. With a primal roar of anger it came barreling down the dark cavern, moving with speed that a being made of stone had no right to have. The group's attention snapped to the rock Pokemon. Lucario acted first, he jumped and flipped in midair, landing behind the spherical Pokemon and slammed a glowing palm into its back. The graveler howled in pain as the force palm detonated and hurled it forwards. Pikachu rocketed into a quick attack, meeting the rock type midway before it could recover from Lucario's force palm. His tail burned bright silver as he readied iron tail. Giving the graveler no time to react, 
Pikachu slammed the quick attack boosted Iron Tail into its hard underbelly. The force of the attack was enough to halt Graveler's forwards momentum and cracked its rock-hard outer carapace. Its eyes bugged out in pain. Finally, it was Ash's turn. With his aura aiding him he closed to distance with Graveler in the blink of an eye. While still in pain, Graveler lashed out at Ash with one of its large meaty fists. Ash ducked around the attack, reared back and punched with an aura-enhanced punch where Pikachu's iron tail had struck mere moments before. Graveler's outer shell shattered. Sir Aaron's gloves protected his hands from any damage he might have taken from punching solid stone. The Graveler wailed once more in pain before it fainted. Ash winced at the injuries the Pokemon had sustained in the extremely short battle they had just had with it. He knew that the any rock type Pokemon could easily regenerate any damage to their outer shell, but the damage looked downright lethal to his mind. Lucario noticed this immediately and tried to reassure him. Relax Ash, he said as he comfortingly patted Ash on the shoulder. I've seen Pokemon bounce back from way worse injuries than this. Give it an hour and Graveler will be up and about like nothing happened. Ash nodded, not really convinced, but Lucario's words did calm him down a little. He sighed and scratched his head. Well, no use worrying about it, I guess. Let's finish our meal and continue on our way. His Pokemon nodded in agreement and quickly went back to their meal. Their group would finish eating soon enough. The Aura trainee once again placed the leaf against his mouth and started playing Oracion. Pikachu jumped back onto his shoulder as they made their way down the corridor unopposed, the wild Pokemon once more entranced by the melody of Oracion. After another hour of traveling the group came to a section where the corridor they were in split into three separate directions. One of them, Ash noted, had a sign pointed towards it with a message on it that said it would lead out of M.T. Moon. Ash directed a look at Lucario, not stopping his song. Lucario got the message and placed his palm in front of his chest spike. The tube-like extensions on the back of his head raised in the air as his aura sight activated at his command. After a moment or two they lowered again, and Lucario started walking towards the corridor on the right, which Ash had just noticed actually climbed steeply up. It probably led to a higher level. He quickly followed the aura Pokemon. The corridor did indeed lead to a higher level. A level with a lot of wild Pokemon. In the end it didn't matter, because all of them fell under the spell of Oracion just as easily as the Pokemon on the level below. The group continued on in silence, only the song of Oracion filled the silent chambers as they walked. Any wild Pokemon they encountered on the way fell silent as they approached. They climbed up a couple more levels, coming closer and closer to their end goal. Finally, after traveling for what seemed like an entire day, a meager amount of light greeted them up ahead. Their eyes lighted up and they quickly made for the opening in the mountain. Ash stopped playing as they exited the chamber and emerged on M.T. Moon's exterior. They were on a steep cliff which led into a narrow path that traveled up the mountain. Stars twinkled overhead, it was nighttime. Ash frowned as even darker clouds than before obscured the stars once more. Lucario looked at the position of the stars and calculated for a moment. He whistled. It's already two o'clock in the morning. We have been traveling for far longer than I had expected. Pikachu snorted softly at that. Ash shivered as the cold and crisp night air brushed up against him. Then he yawned. I'm rather tired. Let's set up camp here and continue tomorrow. His friends nodded in agreement. Ash released Pidgeotto. He smiled at the sleepy normal and flying type. Hey, Pidgeotto. Would you please get us some firewood? Pidgeotto yawned and nodded at him. She quickly flew down the mountain, towards the woods to find some firewood. Meanwhile, Pikachu and Lucario had dug the trench for the campfire. Ash sighed and took out his sleeping bag from his backpack and placed it down on the ground. Pikachu snickered. You both look tired, he noted. And I'm not. You both need to work on your endurance. Ash's and Lucario's brow twitched. I think that's because you have been sitting on my shoulder this entire time, Pikachu. You're just lazy, Ash returned dryly. Or maybe I was being smart and let someone else do the hard work for me, Pikachu countered, smiling mischievously. Right, Ash snorted. No, you're just lazy. Lucario nodded in agreement. Just then, Pidgeotto returned with a stack of firewood clenched in her talons. 
Ash smiled gratefully at her as he took the firewood from her. Thank you, girl, he said as he pet her head. She cooed softly back at him before he returned her. He quickly placed down the firewood in the center of the trench. With the help of Lucario they quickly had a fire going. The group settled around the campfire, comforted by its warm glow. Ash looked up at the peak of M.T. Moon in the distance, barely visible in the darkness of the night. If he had to guess, they had climbed about halfway up the mountain. Tomorrow they would reach the peak. The thought made him smile. He remained awake for another 15 minutes before wishing his Pokemon goodnight and crawling into his sleeping bag. Ash went out like a light. The next morning Ash was awoken by the clean and crisp mountain air. He yawned and crawled out of his sleeping bag. He looked around their campsite and raised an eyebrow at the sleeping forms of Pikachu and Lucario. Strange, usually Lucario was awake long before he even started stirring. Ash shrugged off the anomaly and went about his morning rituals. Having done that he sat down on his sleeping bag to have his breakfast, another pair of self-made sandwiches. The aura user frowned at them. He needed to have some more variety in food, otherwise anything he ate would become pretty stale in time. While eating he looked up at the sky and frowned at the still dark cloud-covered sky. The fluffy white and gray clouds of yesterday had given way to pitch black thunder clouds. It might be a little dangerous to be on a mountain right now, he mused. After a second of thought, Ash shrugged. He and Lucario could redirect electricity into the ground using their aura so they were safe from lightning strikes. And Pikachu was an electric type, enough said. When he was halfway done with his sandwiches Lucario woke up. He got up from his position besides the extinguished remains of the campfire and stretched to get all the kinks out. The Pokemon blinked when he spotted Ash already awake. He wished his student good morning, which was returned, and sat down to have his own breakfast. Ash finished his breakfast moments later and took out the Pokeco from his backpack. He took out two bowls and filled them up with the Pokemon food. Pikachu, it's time to wake up and smell the sunshine. He called out to his starter. Pikachu woke up, groggy, and grumbled something under his breath. He rolled over, not wanting to wake up yet, until his nose detected the presence of the Pokeco. His eyes snapped open and he bolted for his bowl of food. Snorting, Ash unclipped Pidgeotto's Pokeball and released the avian. She yawned as she finished materializing and wished him good morning. Good morning, Pidgeotto, Ash returned. Did you sleep well? I slept fine, she said slightly tiredly. The avian woke up completely moments later. Her eyes narrowed at their surroundings. Ash, I was too tired to ask yesterday, but what are we doing on MT? Moon, I thought you'd said we would head directly towards Cerulean City. I did say that, Ash confirmed. He smiled in anticipation as he continued. But when we entered MT, Moon I learned something amazing that altered my plans. The Pokemon in the caverns became very aggressive all of a sudden. Lucario deduced the reason for that to be a legendary that has taken up residence on the very peak of MT. Moon. Pidgeotto blinked, clearly not having expected that. She grumbled lightly to herself. Around Ash the most unlikely things always seem to happen without fail, and she hadn't even been traveling with for more than three weeks yet. Ash's smile widened as he furthered his explanation. Since seeing a legendary is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I decided that we should make a detour in order to see it. You know, for the experience. I see, she responded after a moment of processing his answer. The avian shivered slightly as the cold morning mountain air rustled her feathers. She clicked her beak as she smelled the Pokeco. Excuse me, the normal and flying type said and hopped off towards her bowl of food. Ash chuckled at that and moved back to the remains of the campfire. It was time he repeated one of many exercises Lucario had shown him in order to learn how to control his aura. The cap-wearing trainer hadn't used it for a while and he supposed he needed to have the repetition. He sat down in a cross-legged position and placed his hands on his legs, palms, covered by Sir Aaron's gloves, facing upwards. The aura trainee took a deep breath, exhaled slowly, and focused his aura. His life energy practically leapt at him at his command and embraced him fully as it surged into every nook and cranny of his body, filling him with immense strength. He regulated that energy with an iron will as his focus sharpened. 
While his mind was in a total Zen state of mind, on the outside his body was in a completely different state. The blue energy of aura surged up and down his body in a magnificent display. His hair rustled wildly thanks to the release of power. And the crystals embedded into the gloves he was wearing shimmered with focused power. The Pokemon trainer reveled in his power. It was so exhilarating, so liberating, so empowering. Nothing could compare to this. After a moment of simply wallowing in his power, Ash focused his aura sight. With the extra focus lent to him by being in a meditative state the scope of his aura sight increased dramatically. It could now cover the entirety of M.T. Moon. He still wasn't able to make out the exact location of the legendary. It was still obscured behind the immense veil of power that its mere presence generated around itself. Ash, Lucario's voice broke through his meditation and inner thoughts. His aura retreated back into his body as his hold over it broke. He opened his eyes and snapped them up at Lucario. Said Pokemon gestured for him to get up. Everybody is ready to head out. We're leaving. Ash nodded and got up from his position on the ground. He cracked and rolled his neck to get all the kinks out. After a moment of doing that he looked around the cliff they were on. Everything had been cleaned up and his backpack laid ready for him. He quickly got ready to leave and waited until Pikachu had taken his spot on his shoulder again before heading out. Let's go. I want to see that legendary before nightfall. His Pokemon nodded at him and followed him as they started trudging down the narrow path up the mountain. They traveled in silence, they had nothing to really talk about at the moment. A cold breeze swept past them. Ash could already smell the rain coming. He was proven right moments later as a slow drizzle started falling from the sky, pattering against the lid of his cap. It wasn't long before it was raining down by the bucket loads. A harsh wind battered against them and thunder crackled overhead. Pikachu and Lucario were easily withering it, Pokemon were hardy like that. Ash wasn't dealing so well with it, but he could ignore the cold and the uncomfortable wetness soaking into his pores. Lucario had trained him nearly every day since he had become his student, and he didn't call off their training for some bad weather. He could deal with this. Suddenly, and completely without warning, there was a bright flash of white. Thunder rolled in the sky and there was a scream that reverberated down Ash's spine and into stomach, where a cold pit formed. His head snapped up and his eyes narrowed in the direction he had heard the scream originate from. He could barely see through the bad weather, but he could just make out a small shape dangling of off a cliff further down the path on a slightly higher elevation than they were on. Ash was running down the narrow path before even his conscious mind had registered that his feet were moving. Pikachu clung with all his might to Ash's jacket as he was almost flung away from Ash's shoulder. Lucario was hot on his heels. Somebody help me. I'm slipping. Came the extremely frightened and clearly feminine scream, which was actually only barely being heard over the crackle of thunder. As if to place emphasis on her words, a piece of rock broke off besides the form dangling down the cliff side and fell down the steep mountain disappearing out of their view in mere moments as gravity pulled it down in the deep, dark gully. We're not gonna make it in time. Ash hollered at Lucario. Give me a push. Lucario acted immediately at his request. The aura Pokemon grabbed Ash tightly, his paws clenching around the fabric of his jacket, and swung him bodily around. With a yell of exertion and aura-enhanced strength he hurled Ash towards the struggling girl. Ash soared through the air with all the grace and speed of a flying bullet. Higher and higher he went as he got closer and closer to his goal. Harsh winds whipped at his face and water battered his form. Lightning bolts rolled through the sky in a flashy show of lights, nearly blinding him with their intensity. And yet, his eyes refused to move from his goal. Ah! The girl let out a startled yelp as the rock she was holding onto cracked and then suddenly fell apart. Her eyes widened and she screamed in paralyzing fear as the force of gravity asserted its dominance. She plummeted into the abyss, falling down the deep and dark gully. The young would-be hero's eyes widened as he realized in less than a nanosecond that he wouldn't be able to catch her in time. She was going to plummet to her death. Without thinking and acting on instinct Ash channeled a shitload of aura to his legs and kicked the air in mid-flight. There was the sound of something popping and suddenly he was moving nearly twice as fast as he was before. Just fast enough to save the girl. He caught her in mid-air, catching her in his arms bridal style. 
Her eyes snapped up towards him, uncomprehending what was going on and glazed with naked fear. Asha's momentum made them continue on soaring in the sky for a few more moments before they were pulled down towards the ground again. They landed safely on the narrow path. The girl's eyes remained trained on his, as if in a trance. Ash took the chance to take in her appearance. The girl in his arms had wavy purple hair, which was drenched and matted with water. Deep purple eyes looked unthinkingly back at him. Her clothes consisted of a white and light purple t-shirt with wide sleeves along with yellow lines and dots. Light purple jeans and black shoes finished her attire. Ash winced, she sure wasn't dressed for traveling on a mountain. The purple-haired maiden blinked dumbly at her rescuer, not really believing what just happened. Then it clicked. Her hands came up and hooked themselves around Ash's neck. She buried her head in the crook of his neck as she started sobbing in relief. Ash held her uncomfortably. He wasn't really sure how one should deal with a distraught girl. In the end he simply held her tightly and whispered sweet nothings and reassurances into her ear. We should get her someplace where she can recover from her experience, Lucario said, having just caught up with Ash. Said trainer twitched at suddenly hearing his voice. Preferably somewhere dry, Lucario continued. Could you search for one? I don't think splitting my attention is a good idea right about now, Ash said, shifting the girl in his arms. Lucario nodded and placed his palm in front of his chest spike. The tube-like extensions on the back of his head raised into the air as his aura sight activated. There's a cave a little farther up ahead, Lucario announced a moment later as his eyes opened and the tube-like extensions dropped back down. If we hurry we could be there in five minutes. Ash nodded and started moving down the narrow mountain path in a quick jog. He didn't want to needlessly tussle around his passenger now would he? All the way to the cave the girl clung tightly onto him. She had stopped crying, but her body was racked with tremors born of fear and shock. Ash held her tightly in turn, trying to provide her some comfort. It took somewhat longer than Lucario had estimated to reach the cave because they weren't moving at their top speed, but they got there. Ash whispered encouragingly into the girl's ear as they entered the cave. It was cold and dark, but it was dry. His eyes turned over to his mentor. Lucario, go get some wood. We need to warm her up. Lucario nodded at him and ran back out into the rain to do as he requested. Ash turned his attention back over to the girl he still held in his arms. He lowered her, allowing her feet to touch the ground. She seemed a bit shaky, so he guided her to a rock she could sit on. He sat her down and shrugged off his backpack. He opened one of the largest side pockets and took out a thick, fuzzy blanket. He unfolded it and wrapped it around the shivering girl. She took it gratefully and wrapped it tighter around herself. There you go, he said and stepped back to give her some space. Is that better? The girl nodded minutely, not daring to look at him. Ash frowned at her. She still seemed very shaken up, which was to be expected after nearly falling down a cliff. Talking to her should distract her a bit, he mused to himself. What's your name? He asked the girl, genuinely curious. The girl's purple eyes flickered towards him at the question. She hesitated for a brief moment before responding. Annabelle. My name is Annabelle. Ash smiled at her. Annabelle, that's a nice name. Despite herself, Annabelle blushed at the compliment. He looked her over curiously as he asked his next question. What you're doing here anyway? You aren't exactly dressed for traveling in the mountains. Annabelle answered immediately, more sure of herself now. She barely stuttered as she spoke. I I wanted to see the legendary, was the surprising answer. Ash looked at her weirdly. How did she know of the legendary that had taken up residence on MT? Moon. She noticed his look and hurried to explain. I I have a special ability, she said in a huff. It allows me to understand the thoughts of any Pokemon I am close with and communicate mentally with them. I call it empathy. The moment I entered MT. Moon I noticed the change in the wild Pokemon and my own. They informed me of what was going on. That a legendary was on MT. Moon, Annabelle smiled weakly at him. Seeing a legendary is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I just had to see it, and it nearly got me K killed. Ash slung his arms around her as Annabelle started sobbing again, reminded of her terrible experience. There wasn't much he could say to her to calm her down, so he simply held her close. 
And then he remembered the leaf in his pocket. He tightened his hold on Annabelle and took out his leaf whistle. Placing it against his mouth Ash started playing the beautiful and calming melody of Oracion. The sound echoed in the dark cavern, adding to the beauty of the sound. Annabelle stilled as the sound washed over her. She wrapped her arms around Ash's midsection and relaxed into him as she simply continued listening to the high-pitched yet calming melody of Oracion. And then another idea hit him. Ash smiled as he made the suggestion and removed the leaf from his mouth. Let out your Pokemon. I'm sure that they will be happy to know that you're all right. Besides, I'm curious what kind of Pokemon you have. Annabelle grabbed onto the suggestion immediately. She separated from Ash and unclipped three Pokeballs from her belt. Enlarging them with a push of a button she threw them into the sky, releasing the Pokemon within. In three flashes of light her Pokemon materialized. Ash recognized the Pokemon immediately. They were rather well-known Pokemon in Kanto after all. He saw an Eevee, a Kadabra and a Munchlax. Ash noticed something peculiar. The moment they had finished materializing his aura senses picked up on something remarkable. There was a connection between Annabelle and her Pokemon. He could feel aura flowing between the Pokemon and their trainer. They were bonded together, he realized with a start. So this was the source of the empathy Annabelle had mentioned. Her Pokemon immediately noticed their trainer's sorry state. Annabelle did indeed look rather miserable at the moment. Nearly falling off a cliff would do that to you. The Eevee cried out worriedly and tackled her trainer, clinging to her chest. The Kadabra approached silently, its eyes betraying its concern for its trainer and the short squat form of the Munchlax promptly wrapped its stubby hands around Annabelle's leg in the form of a hug. Annabelle's eyes softened as she petted all three of her Pokemon comfortingly. It's all right, guys. I'm perfectly fine. She raised a hand and pointed at Ash. He saved me from falling down a cliff. Annabelle paused as her Pokemon looked horrified at the thought. Her eyes turned back over to her rescuer. I actually didn't get your name, she said pointedly. Ash chuckled. I'm Ash. Nice to meet you. Annabelle rolled her eyes. Ash smiled. Letting out her Pokemon did wonders to calm her down. He blinked when Annabelle's Pokemon turned to look at him and called out their thanks to him for saving their trainer. Ash nodded back at them. Annabelle looked at him weirdly, probably wondering how he had understood what her Pokemon had said, before shrugging it off and thinking that he had just guessed correctly. At that very moment Lucario returned. He stepped into Dark Cave, his fur completely drenched, but it didn't seem to bother him in the least, though. He, like Ash, trained in any kind of weather. A bit of rain wasn't going to annoy him. Annabelle watched Lucario closely as he laid down the stack of firewood in his arms in the center of the cave. Lucario turned his head to look at Ash. Could you give me the flint, please? Annabelle's eyes turned wide and her Pokemon's attention snapped towards Lucario, gaping. Lucario sighed quietly to himself. He was never going to stop having those looks directed at him, would he? You can talk. Annabelle exclaimed in a shocked manner. Lucario and Ash rolled their eyes. Yes, I can talk. Isn't it fan-fucking-tastic? Lucario said in annoyance as Ash handed him the flint. With a few deft flicks he had a spark and moments later they had a nice little fire going. Annabelle blushed. Sorry, you must get that a lot. You have no idea, Lucario muttered as he sat down and warmed his wet form with the warm glow of the fire. Ash huffed before turning his eyes over to Annabelle. Just ignore him. He can be a real grouch sometimes, with a major stick up his ass. Lucario twitched slightly as Annabelle giggled and her Pokemon snickered, but he kept his thoughts to himself. Annabelle's Eevee chose that moment to make a comment. He does have that, don't mess with her I'll turn you inside out in the most painful manner possible, attitude around him, the little brown Pokemon said with a distinctively girly voice. There was a multitude of reactions to that comment. Annabelle giggled again. Lucario twitched harder. The Kadabra looked amused. The Munchlax was snickering in ash. Dot dot dot. He just had to needle Lucario a bit further. Yup, that's Lucario all right. And over the top an utterly crazy jacka. Lucario snapped. As quick as lightning he had bolted upright. He put his clenched fists together as blue light flickered in between his closed fist before he ripped them apart, creating a blue staff made out of solid energy. Ash recognized Lucario's bone rush with a start, 
but had no time to react when Lucario stepped closer to him and pointed the butt of the staff towards the ground at an angle, before sharply twisting and sweeping the staff upwards at high speeds. Right in between Ash's legs. He had a split second to regret how stupid he had just been before the staff made contact with his family jewels. The aura user buckled and collapsed, assuming a fetal position on the ground as he took on the appropriate position. You, dick, he managed to gasp out. Lucario huffed and allowed his bone rush to dissipate. It's your own fault. You should know better than to antagonize someone you know can kick your ass as easily as he can breath. Annabelle looked at the scene and wasn't entirely sure what to make of it. She found it faintly amusing, though. Then she cocked her head to the side as she realized something strange. Hey, did he just understand what Evie had said? She wondered out loud, remembering that Ash had followed up on Evie's remark perfectly. Lucario sighed and scratched the back of his head. Considering that Ash was...